When people ask questions about homosexuality, almost always they follow with, and what does the Bible really say about it? There are about six or seven verses in all of Scripture that speak to even remotely what we might call uh, homosexual activity or homosexual uh, conduct. This teaches in Leviticus that it is an abomination to eat shrimp. A few verses above and below, it says you shouldn't plant two different seeds in the same hole. You shouldn't commingle your crops. It is an abomination to eat a rabbit. There's other law that says you shouldn't wear linen and wool together. They are failing to read the Bible within the context of its authors and of its original culture. To just pick out this is the one that we're going to follow, the Bible doesn't come that way. It's selective reading. When the term abomination is used in the Hebrew Bible, it is always used to address a ritual wrong. It never is used to refer to something innately immoral. Eating pork was not innately immoral for a Jew, but it was an abomination because it was a violation of a ritual requirement. Those biblical laws, they're known as the holiness code. There were laws that were supposed to help people at that time find holiness in their life. To me, that's the important thing to recognize, the historical context in which this was written. There is no ability to procreate when you're engaged in homosexual behavior, so it was a violation of a cultural norm. The sin of Onan in the Old Testament, where Onan is committed to death because he ejaculates out of the woman's body so his partner doesn't get pregnant. As the King James Version says, Onan spills his seed upon the ground and God strikes him dead. It was ritually impure. It was an abomination. I like your show. I like how you call homosexuality an abomination. I don't say homosexuality is an abomination, Mr. President. The Bible does. Yes, it does. Leviticus. 18.22. Chapter and verse. I wanted to ask you a couple of questions while I had you here. I'm interested in selling my youngest daughter into slavery as sanctioned in Exodus 21.7. She's a Georgetown sophomore, speaks fluent Italian, always cleared the table when it was her turn. What would a good price for her be? While thinking about that, can I ask another? My chief of staff insists on working on the Sabbath. Exodus 35.2 clearly says he should be put to death. Am I morally obligated to kill him myself, or is it okay to call the police?